Hello guys, welcome to 3ds Max news for the month of May, a lot of things this month. Let's start with the biggest update for 3ds Max 2024, update 1, a lot of improvements on multiple areas to boost productivity. A new caching method has been added to the boolean modifier, the boolean result is now safe with a scene file which makes subsequent loading of boolean scenes up to 7 times faster. The boolean modifier now fully supports smoothing groups, specified normals and explicit normals. Using a hollow mesh you will see on the boolean list that this object was hollow and it will work better when you do a lot of hollow cuts. We can finally copy paste any controller directly from the spinners, it's very easy to copy and paste or instance. We can set as new defaults that will be persistent over different 3 d max sessions. Array keeps getting better, we have now a first, middle and last option that will keep the first and the last object and, and it will array the objects in between that you can see for example on this example creating a zipper that can be very useful. A new ordered method for array and a new philotaxis options. We get as well more improvements on a smart extrude, fixing normals and a smoothing groups as the user will expect. And uh, not to forget performance improvements, we had improvements on the modifier FFD that it's up to two times faster. The vertex paint modifier when you use the brush, uh, it's ten times faster. We can import multiple images at once on the material editor, and a lot of improvements on a spline allows for faster workflows. To see the full list of improvements, check Chang Soeun, an official list, because he has all the uh, new stuff that we had on this new version, that it's not even present in some of the official documents. Chang Soeun shared on his page a script that will use as well some new Max script uh, expose functions. So when you copy and paste images on the material editor, now you can uh, tell to 3 Max what to do with it. So Changso is providing a script that will auto-detect if you are using V-Ray, Corona, Arnold, F-Storm, or Octane and Redshift to make a native image loader for each renderer. So if you are using V-Ray, it will be using the V-Ray HDRI map, if you are using the Corona, it will be using the Corona map, and so on. Uh, also, it works for OSL. So, super neat, the script is totally free, but you can always buy a coffee to Changso Eun for the great job that he is doing. For my Patreon members, this month I covered this max update showcasing some of this news in detail and also for my patrons they got exclusive tutorials covering Typhlow tips and tricks for scattering, making use of some improvements that we saw on the latest Typhlow versions, we get a couple of versions this month and very useful things for scattering and some pro tips for better organize your Typhlow projects. For the next month I am preparing a new course in how to animate in a very easy way large quantity of vegetation to give more life to your projects and this will be the end result of this uh, course. Other plugins and scripts, i2 Software released a new version of his popular array system in 3ds Max, RailClone. It comes with even a bigger library of parametric objects with all types of parking and street objects, masonry elements, elements for parks and plazas, parametric roads, and 38 different types of street lights. Multiple improvements have been made to make it more flexible, like managing groups, you can rotate lights inside a group for example, the editor can be now always open while you are previewing before you had to close it before doing any change, so way more useful, and it's easier to create macros to be reused. Not to forget a new rail clone and slice modifier and way more options that you can see on the website. Dan Constantin presented a major new release of his form cutter tool, now it's version 3, to accelerate modeling workflows in 3ds Max. On this new version, the tool received a complete new UI, it's simpler, it's more straightforward, real-time cuts, a shape cut tool with a new library to save and load custom shapes mirrors, and a bunch more of useful tools. These tools are added on top of the already complete arsenal of new possibilities that already offer this powerful modeling tool. You can create cloth, it has a built-in array tool, uh, pretty cool stuff, check it out. Mihai Lupu released a very interesting tool to do basic sculpting inside 3ds Max. Very interesting to see this tool in action with cool functionalities added. Easy ID selection, multiple common brushes to flatten, smooth, pinch, 
and all the useful stuff that you, you, you need to do while sculpting. You have quick booleans and quick retopology, all on a clean and a very nice interface. Check the videos to see the tool in action, it costs $20. Anima is perhaps the most popular crowd system in 3ds Max, now in this new update adds some minor functionalities. However, on the 3ds Max plugin we received compatibility with 3ds Max 2024, improved compatibility of the 4D models with Chaos Vantage and options to copy instead of instance duplicated drop characters. Final Render and Final Tune has been updated with Service Pack 5. A lot of bug fixes and improvements. The most substantial is that now Final Tune offers direct 2D SVJ vector support for export and rendering. So you can render in directly to SVG files and import them in Illustrator or whatever you want to do with them. Hero Set added a very useful search bar inside the Slate Material Editor. Something I always dream on, and yeah, finally it's here. You can pay what you want for this tool and get it on his Gumroad page. As basic as it gets, but I think it's very useful. You can write whatever you want and automatically you will get the note. Compact Biped Selector is done by MG Blouser. It's a fork from a very popular script from Jim Jaggers that adds some functionality to it. The original script wasn't updated for a while and was not anymore available. This version also is easier to deploy in 3ds Max in a self-contained package. Talking about Biped, Norberto Aguilera is sharing some cool animations. We have one Spider-Man jumping across the city, and a very cool one inspired by Arkane with even facial animation. In this latest one, the rig is done by Rami Mohamed and rendered by Iskander Bigoa Perez. On a stack group in Facebook, you will find the links to download the 3ds Max files that are totally free, so thank you a lot Norberto Aguilera for, for these animations. On my YouTube community tab, we keep doing polls. I ask about what people want to see from some tools that in 3ds Max has not been updated in ages. Close to 50% of you ask for cloth updates, that I will agree, I would like to see some cloth updates. We ask as well for the favorite 3ds Max update, looks like people is very happy with Max 2024, with 61% of people saying that has been one of the greatest releases in a long time. And finally we ask about what particle system 3ds Max users are using, and here the new player Typhlow is the big winner, with 72% of artists using it, versus all the other options available that no one comes close, and I mean... There is a reason that Typhlow is popular, it's great, it's fast, it has a lot of advantage. Check my community tab in YouTube, you will have the link below. I keep posting news there and we are doing polls and when I found something relevant, I post it there. And the favorite section, 3ds Max is only for Archbeath. A lot of cool stuff this month, like every month lately. And yeah, we will have animation, we will have VFX, motion graphics, scientific stuff, let's start. This project is from AJ Jefferies and it's a very fun project called Peace. And as he says, it's an exceptionally dumb idea that I think that turned out great. All done in 3ds Max, Typhlow, V-Ray and Phoenix. Very, very nice stuff, very fun. Aliresa Akbari shared in a stack group in Facebook a lot of work in progress and research and development of his personal projects. It's done in 3ds Max, V-Ray and Cat. We can see a very cool horse and a soldier that we hope that we can see it finish soon because it's looking very good, Ali Aliresa. Vizard shared a showreel created as a side project for fun exploring different tools and plugins using 3ds Max, Corona Renderer, Phoenix, Typhlow and Forest Pack. Simon Sobolev shared a character that he created for the mobile game Call of Duty Mobile, done in 3ds Max, ZBrush, Substance 3D Painter and Marvelous Designer. And more games, Vlad Ovoy created a rocket car for legendary game of heroes, modeling done in 3ds Max, Photoshop and After Effects. You can see simple model in 3ds Max but with the shading and the texturing looking great. Tad Productions shared a very cool rigging setup that they are using for 
Patty and the Wrath of Poseidon, I assume it's a movie for kids, where we can see how flexible it is to change between different characters, keeping the animation, and yeah, all types of morph and very cool stuff. Christian Ludwigsen shared a very cool showreel with a mix of commercial and personal experiments. As he's saying it's 99.99% .99 of 3ds Max, and he's very excited with the new 3ds Max 2024 release. Very cool stuff here as well. His son Berat shared on a stack a simple yet very cool shot of a girl running into a waterfall, done in 3ds Max, Typhlow and V-Ray using Phoenix for the waterfall. Sometimes, basic and simple projects can turn great. Shirsad Barami is sharing his progress on a tool that he's calling Tentacle Dynamics. He has been learning physics and math during the past two years. He created his own solver instead of using physics to have better control over it. He's working in having different types of collision, self-collision, forces. I would love to see where this tool is going, uh, looking very good so far. On an article on TurboSquid, we can see how SciPro created a 3D animated hair model for science visualizations. We didn't so many science related content on this news, but I know that 3ds Max plays a huge part on most of them. There is a lot of people using 3ds Max to visualize virus and infections and operations. Uh, so yeah, in this case they, are, they use ZBrush to do the main model, 3ds Max was used to ungrab the model, the artist, by the way, is Eugene Poznyavnov, and it's rendered with V-Ray. They did the rigging in 3ds Max using bones, and yeah, it turned it, it's a little gross, but it's great. EUE, End User Event, Reconnect, is happening again next month during June 22 and 23 in Utrecht. It's one of the most emblematic and veteran 3D conference that I know at least, with a lot of cool talks, and it's happening inside a bar, so I think that it's pretty cool. You can take a beer while listening to some 3 d Max, and nowadays it's about all types of software, making it quite a unique experience. Different speakers from Corona Renderer and V-Ray will be presenting exclusive news, and a lot of different artists will give talks about workflows and projects, check it out. Uh, they are announcing more and more uh, speakers as uh, every day, so check it out. Pretty cool conference. I hope that one day I can attend to one of them. And uh, that's all for this month, guys. Thanks to all of you guys. Please remember to give a comment, give a like. It helps me a lot and it's super helpful. And thanks a lot to all my Patreon subscribers. It's helping me a lot. And every month we are having multiple tutorials exclusive for my Patreons, so I hope that everyone there is, is happy. Thank you a lot, guys, and see you soon. Bye.